uh, we want to thank you, Doctor, for uh, your effort during the semester. Thank you very, very much. And uh, this is our team, Haysan and Maya and Samah. And uh, first we will begin uh, began with the introduction and then the kind of background, demand, supply, and that, uh, then we will speak about the conclusion. At first, uh, do you, uh, does anyone think that uh, the, uh, the hot weather uh, cannot affect the economy? Thank you. Of course not. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course it, uh, it affects the economy in the direct way and the indirect way. The direct way that can damage uh, the crops, that can damage the product, and the indirect way that, that can affect the health of uh, the people with the human in many ways. <laughs> Okay. can uh, do uh, dehydration, overheating, uh, exhausting, uh, heat, uh, heat stroke, uh, heat uh, cramps. That may cause uh, the increase of absenteeism and uh, uh, decrease the productivity of workers. The boss can cause, uh, cause uh, the decrease of productivity of the business and also decrease the productivity of the economy. So the air condition have, have uh, uh, a, a, a big role in our economy today. So we have to thank uh, Mr. Wes Gallier who invented the uh, air condition. First. So we were we're speaking about the beginning of the air condition. The beginning of air condition has come from Egypt, from ancient Egyptian. They used the reeds and they hang the reeds uh, on the windows. Uh, and uh, uh, with reeds, when the water uh, tried to pass uh, through the window, the, the, the wet reads the water is evaporated, so the cold water on uh, the cool air is intermodal. Okay, and uh, this uh, way of basic air conditioning technique is uh, spread uh, widely spread to Spain through North uh, Africa and to India and uh, China through uh, the Middle East. So uh, now we are going to speak uh, the, the way the idea of the passive air condition is working uh, um, uh, till the beginning of the uh, 20th century, uh, until the first air conditioning system designed by the Will Scali. It was, uh, it was at 1902, and uh, he, uh, after that, published a paper about the rational psychometric uh, formula that we can. Uh, measures the uh, humidity and the temperature during this and the first home air condition is uh, 1926 and the uh, first uh, big, uh, the biggest uh, skyscrap air conditioning system in uh, 1949 uh, and uh, at, at the end will carry his name to one of the most uh, influential people or in, the, in this century. Okay, now we are speaking about the types of air conditioning. We have uh, non-centralized air conditioning and centralized air conditioning. Non-centralized air conditioning, uh, the windows, uh, wind, uh, wind air conditioning system and split uh, air conditioning system. And uh, centralized air con conditioning is the back uh, central split, uh, BRB, uh, uh, stand for uh, variable, uh, I don't know, K, more more things, and travel. Uh, today we are going to speak, uh, to speak about the split air conditioning system. Next one. Uh, to have the overview, we have to speak about the demand in uh, the old uh, of the global. The market size of the air conditioning is uh, 111 billion dollar. Forty percent of this is the market size in China. But uh, today we are specifically speak about Africa that have three percent of the market size. Uh, we all know that Africa, all the country in Africa has a hot weather, and they are developing countries. Uh, so we, the, the, the industry of the air conditioning has a, a opportunity to come bigger in this uh, area, and uh, so. That this is the three percent of the, the market size of Africa. You should have uh, almost thirty percent of the demand uh, in Africa, 
that make Egypt the big, the biggest market in Africa. And we we are going uh, we are we will uh, we are going to speak about uh, the market in, uh, in Egypt uh, with uh, I think uh, Aisa. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we are speaking about the macro environmental analysis uh, in Egypt. Okay. <laughs> we are a political stable. Uh, we have the government control everything. Uh, we have a strong inter uh, international relation. Uh, we have a, a little challenge in the important, important rules right now. Uh, economy, uh, we, have, we are building up right now. Uh, uh, we are building right now a good um, infrastructure. We have a boosted income growth. Okay, <laughs> even in pandemic, we have also boosted uh, income growth. Uh, uh, Egypt uh, joined many uh, new zone of uh, exporting um, in Africa. Uh, social, social uh, company try to. Uh, Reform the evaluate probably okay enhance the and they enhance a medical social service. Uh, now uh, the measure of the people in Egypt uh, vaccinated from the COVID-19 technology. We have a dramatic shift uh, to e-commerce, uh, well, and we now uh, and uh, the authentic uh, technology. Now in, we are in the era of the authentic technology. We, uh, we have uh, increased uh, in, uh, during this uh, era. The importance of logistic companies increase. Uh, environmental, we try to focus on the friendly products. The climate change is affected, uh, affecting uh, uh, on Egypt. Uh, the demographic, uh, we have a massive population. Uh, and the majority of the population is aged between 25 and uh, 54. That make uh, it is very promised for uh, any new uh, growth for economy. And now we are going with uh, Mike. Now the mic. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Mike. Just click. Uh, okay, my name is Maya. I'm going to walk you through the company background and how it was invented and everything. Uh, the first thing was, in 1976, Morocco was founded under the chairman Adel Barakot. It stands for Mr. Refrigeration and Air Conditioning, and it was a joint uh, stock company, and it was the first uh, foundation of it, 1976. And then in 1992, there was a joint venture between Morocco and Carrier, and by that they became the largest heating, ventilation, air conditioning company in Africa. They took a, a, a huge market side of that. And then in 2010, uh, there was a joint venture again, but this time with Maidea, which is a Chinese company that we will talk in more details in the next slide. Okay, so the microeconomics of the Morocco company, we have uh, the departments of uh, the company. Their HR it just performs the normal functions of HR and it complies to the labor law of Egypt. Uh, their marketing, they are the, the ones promoting for the business and they are the faces of the company. Uh, in terms of finance, they're the ones acquiring and managing and planning the funds and the uh, investments uh, for the company. The R&D, they are one of the most important uh, departments because they're constantly trying to figure out uh, and new competitive edges and new technologies for the ACs. Uh, their production and quality assurance as well, one of the most important ones, because the production, they are ongoingly trying to increase the efficiency and to meet the targets of the output uh, products. The quality assurance, they bug search most of the time to ensure that everything is aligned and everything is going as planned. Their supply chain, they change from the raw materials and they take the raw materials and um, change it to become finished goods and to maximize the customer experience. Uh, their suppliers, they are very strategic at their choice of suppliers so that the raw materials are 100% uh, of a known source and are going to be effective with the end product. 
so uh, the MyDia company, which we said was the last uh, joint venture in 2010, it has some uh, details. The first of it, it's, its history, MyDia itself was established in 1968 in southern China. It offers a wide range of home appliances, not just ACs. It has also um, uh, stuff for laundry, cooking appliances, uh, appliances, water appliances and lighting. Uh, in terms of operations, they have more than 100,000 employees. They are present in more than 200 countries. And they have more than 21 production facilities. And they, are, they have centers worldwide. Uh, they rank number one in terms of largest durable ACs manufacturers in the world, and they are the number 288 in the global Fortune 500. Also, their products, they have world's largest production of major appliances, and they are literally the number one brand of air treatment products. Okay, so uh, their brands, they have three main brand, uh, three main products, sorry, Mission Pro Coal, uh, Pro Pro Cool Only Mission Inverter and Beastless. Uh, this one, it, it, it works with the, the cooling effect only, it doesn't have any uh, heating effects. Uh, it, one of its features is that it's self cleaning and it's smart, self diagnostic, and it has an option for a smart Wi Fi kit, so it's a smart kind of AC, and it's just the cool one, it doesn't have any heating system. The Mission Inverter, it's its edge is it has like a 50% reduction in the consumption of uh, electricity, which is economically friendly. Uh, the third one, Breathless, it has its edge is it has three way air distributing, normally that takes the cooling. Both these uh, brands, they have the cooling and the heating capacity, and the three of them, they can work up to temperature 52, uh, 52 degrees Celsius. So they're very common in the Middle East and uh, African countries. Okay, so if we're going to talk about the product mix and the market share, product mix of <coughs> Maidea, they have the high wall uh, ACs, the ducted and the floor stand. Floor stands are mostly used in restaurants, mosques, churches, and places that are public mostly. Ducted ones, they're more in a commercial stuff, uh, hotels, shops, uh, places that are owned by people mostly. Uh, and the high wall, it's mostly in the houses and it's the main category in the market. So if we see them with uh, percentages, the high wall has 90%, which is mostly what they're doing. And the duct one is only 8%, floor ceiling and floor stand, each one was 1%. So when we think about the, the analysis of the market in terms of market share, we find that the Cadillac brand is taking 39%, which is a big percentage. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's what we do. And my idea is 17%, then comes sharp, 13, then fresh 10%, and the other ones are like 6, 7, and V is 2. Uh, and that's it when it comes to the marketing background. Mm -hmm. Good. This like this. Okay. What is our product? Our product is my idea. High wood 12K. Uh, I split which we have from our homes. 12k is 1.5 horsepower. As you could see from this market research, you will find that based on the air conditioner types, high wall represents around 90%. Therefore, we have decided to choose the high wall, the 12k, which is very uh, dominant. Now, before. Following the market analysis, which uh, May has started, this is a uh, panorama of price segmentation. You will find here all the air conditioners categories, which May has already uh, presented, adding the cassette. You will find that most of the seats are in the entry level, which is around uh, $400,000. Uh, uh, this is the entry tier. This is represent 88%. 11%, which is the uh, value is only for invert, which is uh, the low uh, power consumption models. And just this 1% is for uh, the business unit, which we have already uh, talked about. Uh, next slide, please. This is, is a brand positioning for the current air conditioner brands in Egypt. You will see that Kaya, LG, and Sharp are considered the top of mind brands. They are very known for long heritage, 
they are known for their reliability and quality, but they are costing a premium price. Then we are having my dear fresh green. They are popular brands, but they are very popular because they are at affordable prices. They have moderate quality, and we are have others, uh, several brands of air conditioners uh, in the market of Egypt. Next slide, please. This is a product benchmark between Fresh, which represents a market share of 10%, Gree, 2%, and Mydea, 6%. Actually, the strategy for Mydea has been to introduce bigger uh, capacities, like 30, which is uh, 4 horsepower, and 36, which is 5 horsepower. Also, they have been working in order to improve the panel, the appearance of the unit, and added some smart uh, features like Wi-Fi. They have also introduced the inverter uh, model for uh, lower power consumption, and they have improved the performance and feature for their models. Next slide, please. Now we will go for uh, the demand of my dear high volt 12K. Uh, next slide. Okay. Yes, we'll click Yes, no, first one. Okay. So Miraco has introduced my dear in Egyptian market in 2011. My dear had well, unknown brand, but my Miraco has been the market leader of air conditioning in Egypt. Therefore, they have been based on on marketing strategy that my idea is from Miraco. Miraco name is giving credibility and trust to my idea uh, brand. Yes. Of course, my idea has succeeded in the uh, domestic market. You will see from 2015 till 2021 that my idea is successful. Every year they are adding a sales a volume. Uh, it has been actually a success story. The reason for this is the idea is a useful brand. They have been working on offering good quality at an affordable prices. The main competitive edge has been on technology, durability, and offering good uh, quality. Of course, it has been linked to Carrier, which is very famous brand for uh, Miraco. It has been bending on the strong distribution of Carrier. We were having 12 uh, direct sales showrooms. 80 exclusive distributors and 1,500 non-exclusive distributors, which has helped to uh, sell uh, big quantities. For offering a uh, low uh, price with good quality, they have re-engineered the operation in order to uh, minimize the cost without sacrificing uh, the quality. Yes. And accordingly, they have succeeded to increase their market share by 16% in uh, last year, especially in Upper Egypt and uh, Delta. Next slide. No, sorry. Uh, previous slide, please. We are having here some uh, observations. Uh, explain, in, explain it on the graph. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, because I, I was uh, intending to explain some for the uh, exchange rate. rate and for some so numbers, but, but it is not uh, here. Okay. okay, please go ahead. Okay. So in 2016, in November, we were having uh, the currency uh, depreciation. Therefore, the exchange rate has increased to 17%. Accordingly, they have increased uh, the uh, unit uh, price. Also, in 2020, because the exchange rate has been reduced, we're having around 15% reduction uh, in uh, price. Of course, in 2016 and 2017, we were having high uh, price increase. Next slide. Yes. We all know that the demand below that when product price is increasing, the quantity demanded is falling. But this is actually violating the demand below, except for 2020, which we were having around 15% decrease in, uh, in uh, sorry, uh, we were having 15% uh, 
in uh, decrease in price, and but we're having 62% increase in uh, uh, quantities. Yes. So this product is not price sensitive. We were having other factors, not just price. We were having seasonality. We were having uh, competition pricing. We were having exchange rate, and those two product mix. In the sales strategy of Miraco, because we are having several product mix and several capacities, so they have been enforcing their distribution to take various product mixes from several models. And if, for example, if a dealer is asking for 30 or 36, his share must include also 12K. So this also has been affecting the demand. Of course, in 2017, Although there is a price jump, but it didn't uh, have uh, an impact on uh, demand. Yes. Yes, next slide. Yeah. So what, so what is the factors which is affecting the demand? Uh, HVAC is a weather sensitive industry. So it is directly impacted by the temperature degree. Because there are other elements such as uh, the humidity, the wind, the speed, but for uh, temperature, it is the main factor which is forcing people in order to buy and use uh, air conditioning. The second factor is the high electricity cost. Due to the increasing uh, cost of electricity, people now are reluctant to use or buy an uh, air conditioner. Therefore, they are now going to low power consumption model such as an inverter. Of course, the product price due to the high inflation rate which has hit the prices of the air conditioners. Around more than 50% of consumers, their buying decisions is based on the product price. Brand name, brand name is giving credibility and trust to consumers in order to choose which brand of air conditioners. After sales service is a non-price competition. Uh, people now are looking for availability of spare parts, the running cost, for the service before they are choosing which brand they are going to buy. Yes. Of course, quality. Usually, demand is uh, fall by price, but it is increasing by the good quality of product. Technical advancement. Actually, uh, during the last years, we were having high technology for air conditioning related to the smart air conditioners and related to the air sanitization, which is air uh, quality and also to some uh, uh, artificial intelligence technologies used in air conditioners. Of course, the, the more consumers we are having, the large demand we are having, although for some uh, models, although the population is still the same, but some brands could appeal more demographic, especially for inverter. Uh, number of substitutes. Now we are having several uh, competitors in uh, Egypt for air conditioning before they, we were having only three or five. Now more competitors are eating and cannibalizing from the market share of my idea. And finally, people are always looking for uh, better deals, promotions, uh, offers, uh, facilities in payment terms in order to decide to buy this luxury uh, product. Our uh, product is perfectly elastic, it's not price uh, sens sens sensitive. We are having other various uh, factors affecting uh, the uh, de demand. Uh, usually, in elastic, the, uh, the quantity demanded should be responded substantially to price increase. But due to the fact that we are having a close substitute, it is a luxury product. Uh, it is elastic, but it is perfectly elastic, but it is not affected by price. It is more affected uh, in other factors. Last one. I believe that it could be substantially related to price in a more uh, economically stable environment. Uh, now, Hi Sam is going to take us through the supply. Thank you. Thank you. Ten minutes. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay, so it's about the supply, how the supply being um, done in Miracle. Um, I'm going to take you on a small journey about the company. So from the supply perspective, we started at 1979 by about um, uh, 4,500 meter squares. 
about 250 employees and only we are producing 2,000 units. 2010, um, uh, my day joined and um, it was like 37% and my day was 32% of the company. 2019, my day had the 51% of the share of the company and then 2022, nowadays, we have about 90,000 meters square, um, about 1,400 employees um, in the company and about 400 thousand units being produced yearly and these being distributed locally and we are doing a bit of export so um, that's through some uh, MIA countries and some African countries as well. So um, here you can see in this table how we are um, during the years how many units we have distributed so I prefer just to explain that in a bit in, in the graph. Um, what are the factors which is impacting, um, impacting our supply? Let's explain it here and then I'm going to go through the graph. So in 2015, for example, the, the price was like this and we have these supply quantities. The, the point here is what I have found from these researches I have done for this company is we are usually working on shortage. So we are not um, exceeding the demand of the market. We always behind that demand by amount by specific amount, which is about 10 to 15 percent. So we always look to the market, we always look to the demand, we always look to our competitor, and always we are supplying less than the demand by 15 to 10 percent. So I'm going to show that in a minute. So what are the factors which is impacting the supply? So um, COVID-19 was. Um, really big factor which is impacting the supply of this product because we have multiple um, factories which is being closed because we, we have that um, um, the stay at home and these policies and uh, amount of constraints we have to the um, employees and uh, also to the uh, people who consume the, um, the, the product itself. Also because of COVID-19 thankfully we have increased on the supply as well. How it come? Because we have increased in the demand. Because most of the people are start to work from home, and according to that, we need to use more products. They need to, for example, they need the, their the place they are working from to be air conditioned, to be um, fine for them to be able to work, and so on. Also, the semiconductor thing, um, and and this is very interesting. When I search about the semiconductors. Before I, I learned about economics, I, I didn't understand why it's a problem. Why, why, why they are not producing more and that's it. It's not the case at all. Um, semiconductor, um, there are four big makers for these semiconductors around the globe. Uh, for example, the Taiwan is the biggest one. We have some in uh, Poland, we have some in the United States, and very big name. If you search for Taiwan, for example, just Put it in Google and just type Taiwan, you will see that the uh, TSMC, which is the main manufacturer of the semiconductor, is just the first result. So why we have this? Because United States is who is managing this industry in the world. Why? Because they are paying the license for the product which can make the design for these ports. And it's not um, allowed to be provided to anyone, only to these four countries. We are allowing this distribution for the software, and then according to that, we can produce the semiconductors. So, my jump to your mind, why we are not increasing the amount of um, supplies and then, the, or just building new factories and so on. Before of that, why we have that shortage um, during the COVID? China purchase most of the semiconductors available in the market, 2019, 2020. They purchase a lot for covering the period because we know that it would be a shortage. And according to that, we had a lot of, um, as you know, manufacturers and um, a lot of uh, industries being closed during the pandemic. After the pandemic, during 2021, when the market started, it was unexpected demand for the semiconductors. And unfortunately, these supplies, these four big supplies, are not able to provide all the market needs. Okay? Um, so why not to build a new factory? And that's it, so we can do that. No, it's not that easy. The factory itself would cost between 15 to 20 billion dollar and five years just for one new manufacturer for this. And of course, keep in mind, it would be United States need to provide you the license to be able to do that. 
without that license, without that software, which can add this, this type of um, words and so on for these semiconductors, this would be nearly impossible. That's why China cannot evolve in this market. Also, the raw materials, we have a shortage in raw material, as you know, because of the COVID. So we, we don't have that amount of um, raw materials, include covers and plastics and so on. However, um, also, we have the currency devi um, deviation, which has been happening in the market, increase the, um, the price of the raw material when we are importing them. Also, the higher consumer demand, as we said, because of COVID, people stay at home, and of course, that increased the demand of time. So let's, let's look at the curve. So as you can see here, starting by just small price here, 4,350 to 35, uh, moving to nearly 6,000, and then start to jump to 8,000 and start building like this. And this is where, of course, if you, if you just see the time timeline here, you, this would be 2016, where we have a fluctuation 2016 for the currency, and then you would see that it's come stay the same. And here we can see this amount in the air. Why it's down like this? Because we have the company done, um, for me, it's a mistake, where they, they bought big stock when the USD dollar was very high at the beginning of the deviation. So they thought it's gonna be, it's starting to, to be just 18 and it would continue like this, but that was not the case. We, we, we become like this for about three or four months, something like that. And after this period, the prices dropped. But the company got a lot of stock during this time. That's why that explains how the price is jumping like this and how the, the price decreased. And here, this caused me, caused my mind to fly because that caused a problem I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay, so here you can see how the average price about the units and the average rise in, in USD and amount we able to produce. Elasticity. What supply elasticity mean? As you know, supply elasticity is supposed to mean how the supply price or the cost of the supply can increase or decrease based on how much I produce. If I if I produce a lot, my product price would be less or my cost would be less. That's supposed to mean my supply is elastic. But if the change in the price is small and I cannot supply more, um, if, the, uh, if, we, uh, just if, if we introduce more, this supply will, will, will not cost less. It will be inelastic. And this is how we can calculate using the equations and so on. What we have found that it's fluctuating. So it's fluctuating between elastic and inelastic. And that's of course because the equation itself, just an equation, it's it's just do the math. So elasticity being completely based on just comparison of the price, and of course that because of what we have about the um, current situation, um, it appears that is. so. It appears to be start to be elastic, and that because of the normal currency um, available during that time, and then turn to be inelastic once we have the de um, deviation in the currency, and then turn back to be elastic again, and then in unusual case, where we have it in negative. I repeat it several times, just recalculating it. Why it's the supply is negative here. We don't care what the supply exactly. is. The quantity. Exactly, so, but here what we have is the price has been decreased. This is extremely important. The price has been decreased, and we have supplied more. So that's why it's unusual case, okay? Why, why this is happening? Again, because we have really fluctuation of the currency. We don't have state currency exchange rate because we are depending on these parts in our um, um, uh, manufacturing and so on. So conclusion, with more. Um, it's uh, the, the blue one here is the supply quantity and the black one is the demand quantity. We always can see that the supply quantity is less than the demand. It's moving all around like this. Only after we have this amount of money and where we able to get these parts which require for manufacturing with this price, we able to produce more items than what the market need. Okay, but we always clean and short it like this.
this product. I'm gonna talk about a little outlook into the future and what the current global trends have uh, in store for, for my idea. Uh, the first thing of, of, of one of the most um, currently popular global trends is the e-commerce, like Ahmed Sehem mentioned. E-commerce and fintech is, a, is, is, is the trend nowadays and although it's not a new concept, it, it was actually invented in 1971 uh, in a college on an internet. Kids used it to buy products from each other. <laughs> and then later on in 1995, the, the giant Amazon entered the market and changed the way e-commerce is uh, and operates forever. Um, even some stores are now preferring to close their, their physical stores and go online like Zara, for example. They are now cl closing all their physical stores or most of the physical stores are preferring to go online. So uh, my idea can, can actually sell their products, although, it, although it's a bit hard because the, the, the more expensive the product, the harder, the harder it is for the consumer to buy it online but uh, they still need to exercise their presence in online platforms if they want to maintain their market share and try and spread it through uh, different channels. The second one is air sanitizing technology and healthy tech, which was uh, also there before COVID-19, but COVID-19 accelerated a lot of things for most uh, industries. So um, they need to start, they, they already have some air filtration techniques, but however, they still need to work on the development and commercialization of these uh, technologies. Um, we also have the IoT, the IoT and smart ACs, which is also the trend. Uh, some of these factors are very interesting, uh, are very interesting such as uh, remote access, power consumption control, and user preferences. My idea already has a Wi-Fi uh, optional kit available, however, I do believe that they need to introduce more smart application on their ACs. The emerging technology definitely um, is very important because it's uh, everything is becoming more expensive right now. So basically, it's going to be uh, an obligation in the future. Uh, the Russian-Ukrainian uh, war is definitely, definitely affecting uh, all, if not uh, most, if not all industries. Uh, the, the the gas prices surged next day after the war happened, which affected everything, everything, the cost of everything is now more, uh, it costs more. Um, okay. Rising transportation prices as well because of the Russian-Ukrainian Ukrainian war. Now I'm gonna talk, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna talk about more local trends, uh, more customized for Egypt. Inflation, although it's a global uh, thing right now, however, in Egypt, uh, inflation is expected to reach 14% by end of this quarter. Uh, it's the main rise is coming from the, the, the increase in prices of food and non-alcoholic beverages, uh, which is by the food increasing the cost of production, and at the end of the day, it poses a very challenging situation for households and businesses alike because businesses face an increasing cost and households face limited resources and their income would, def would definitely not be increasing at the same rate, so they have a, they have to prioritize their spending. The currency floating exchange rate, which is expected to happen soon because Egypt is in the process of obtaining a new loan from the IMF and they need to um, free 100% the exchange rate for the dollar if they want to take the loan, which will also impose more and more uh, increases in prices. Uh, due to the limitation on imports that Selim talked about, which caused a further increase in the prices because uh, most of the goods are now not available. And the subsidy on fuels is also expected to stop 100% if you want to get the loan from the IMF. So all these prices, all these factors are going to heavily impact the prices and the consumer, the household income will remain uh, the same, which will not increase with the same percentage which is going to be a challenge and somehow uh, all businesses, my idea of course, and all businesses will have to adapt to the increase in prices and accordingly uh, survive <laughs> if they want to. 